God is good, everybody. This is Dr. Brian Lewis, and I just want to welcome you to the Phenomenal Life Today broadcast. And I really just want to get into it today, but I believe that you, whatever you're dealing with today, that it can shift today, that the beginning of it can shift, that there is a miracle in your mouth and that you can speak to situations, circumstances, and conditions in your life, and they can begin to change. So many times in our life, we're wrestling with things that are hindering us and blocking us and resisting us, and we're so intent on moving forward that we're dealing with the obstacles that stand between us uh, and our purpose and our destiny or whatever it is that we're desiring, but many times we fail to realize that there could be an internal struggle going on, that there are certain things in our lives that can resist us, and it's not necessarily somebody else, but it's the war within. And so today, I really want to begin to deal with a subject here. I want to help you to understand a subject that sometimes we deal with root systems in our life. Sometimes it's not just the mountains and the walls and the giants that we're dealing with, but many times it's the internal, emotional, and spiritual things that we're dealing with. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now, right here, Jesus has just been teaching about the spirit of offense. And I don't know if you remember, but maybe a few weeks ago, Pastor Tara and I dealt with the spirit of offense. Remember, the spirit of offense, it's a, it's an, it's a stumbling block. It, it, it trips you up. It, it gets involved in your emotions, and you kind of get trapped and tripped up, and you kind of stumble, and it's hard for you to move forward. And here the apostles are saying, you know what? I've seen signs, wonders, and miracles, and I didn't need you to increase my faith then. But when it comes to the emotional, stuff in my life, it's really hard for me to get past it. And so I need you to increase my faith. I need you to take my faith to another level because where I'm at right now, it's very difficult for me to deal with it. But Jesus says this, he says, so the Lord said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, the mustard seed is like the smallest seed there is, but the Bible says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And when it's planted and it's full grown, it's one of the largest trees and, and all the birds can and be there and nest and have a great time. But he says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it will obey you. This is a very interesting because Jesus says, if you have just a little bit of faith, just enough faith to begin to speak to the certain things that are pulling you down and pulling you under, that they could be uprooted in your life and cast into the sea. The sea is a deep, dark place of no return. And so when Jesus tells us to cast things into the sea, it's into a deep, dark place of no return. Sometimes life is complicated, isn't it? Sometimes it's complex and twisted, and we find ourselves dealing with root systems. And the thing about root, system, root systems is they, they go underground. The roots go underground and they, they, they latch on to dirt and other roots and other things. And that's how they begin to, to, to derive strength as they get nutrients from these other things. And many times roots for us are the private things that have been embedded in our life for such a long time that they get, they get tangled below the surface of our lives. And so many times we want to move forward, but we can't move forward because there's things that are tangled and embedded below the surface of our lives. And other people may not be able to necessarily see what we're dealing with. They can see the, the fruit of it and they can see the manifestation of it. But many times there's things and issues and stuff that we're dealing with and Jesus basically teaches us two things. We got to speak to two things. He says that if you speak to the mountains, he said, if you speak to the mountains, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, if you speak to this mountain, it will be removed and cast into the sea. Do not doubt in your heart, but believe that whatever things, uh, but believe that you have what you say and it will be done for you. This is the thing is that there's these mountains that we deal with and, and, and you know, there's these two different concepts here because, you know, when you deal with a mountain, you're speaking to the large obstacles that are in front of you. But when you're dealing with root systems, you're, you're dealing not just with the obstacles and the blockages and the hindrances that are uh, keeping you from moving forward, but the things below the surface. 
And so many of us as human beings were complex. Life is complicated. There is so much more to you than just what meets the eye. And so you could be a, a, a very complicated person on the inside. You may look like everything's going well on the outside. You might have a smile on your face, but on the inside, there's certain things. And every time you want to move forward, every time you want to do something good, every time you want to rise up, there's something that kind of gets in your way. And so Jesus says we could speak to those things that stand in the way, but have you ever thought about the stuff that, that you deal with on a personal level, on an emotional level, on a spiritual level that just kind of keeps you where you are and it's embedded in your soul and it keeps holding you down and holding you hostage and it, 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 it restrains your potential. I hope I'm talking to somebody today and keep you from moving forward and it's emotional and, and it's so emotional that sometimes we can't move forward because there's certain things operating in our lives, roots that started from an early age uh, that, that have affected everything in our life. That's why your relationships are not where they need to be. This is why your marriage may not be where it needs to be. This is why, you know, you could start a job and you get fired and you just keep starting jobs or you can't even find a job. You can't even make it through the interview process. This is why you don't have any friends. This is why stuff is going on because there's certain things that you may have never dealt with roots in your life issues and you know it's there you know what's there but other people don't know what's there and so they don't know that when they're coming into contact with you that they have that they have to deal with all these roots and this is why certain things are holding you this is why the power of addiction holds you this is why the claw of depression holds you because there's certain things operating in your life and and, and you can see the mountains but sometimes this is what will take place is that you will not move forward in life and you cannot deal with the mountains until you deal with the roots. And so there's things under the surface. And what happens is this is that it weakens your faith and it, it's hard for you because it, it, it's like you're at odds with your faith because how can I speak to the visible issues and the external pressures in my life when the core of who I am is so messed up and, and, and so tangled and so convoluted and so complex? How can I have faith to deal with the thing on the outside when I still got something that I'm dealing with on the inside? And many times you want to develop character and you want to develop behavior and you want to develop attitude and you want to develop conduct. But then there's this part of you that when you will to do good, it's so hard for you to do good because of the emotional thing. And your prayer is, Lord, increase my faith. Help me to get over into a place of faith because there is a place here where I'm offended, I'm wounded, I'm hurt, I'm angry. I may, you may have been betrayed by your parents. You may have been betrayed by a loved one. And there's this deep wound and this deep hurt and this deep pain and it's developed roots in your life. And so anytime you try to do something, that root rises up and just kind of begins to choke the nutrients and the life out of you. It's deep within your soil. And many times it won't let go. It's a root. I've seen exposés on roots where they go in and they begin to, to latch on like a mulberry tree, what we're talking about here. It doesn't just develop roots into the earth and into the soil and just get nutrients and water and all that it begins to latch on to other plants until it uh, deprives them of life. And so many times we have so much going on in our lives that we begin to latch on to other people and we begin to tr deprive them of life. You know, you've heard it said hurting people hurt people. And so you develop these roots. But Jesus said that there's a power. See, the life, the power of life and death is in your tongue, that we as a believer, as believers, our miracle is in our mouth. Our mountains need to know the sound of our voice, but so do the root systems. The roots in our life need to know the sound of our voice. Now, if you feel betrayed, broken, hurt, offended, wounded, that's when you begin to speak to those things. You begin to speak what Jesus tells you to speak to these issues. And he said, if you speak to them, if you begin to tell them what they need to do, you can tell them to be uprooted and cast into the sea. And so many times we're in this place and, and, and we're dealing with things that, that in our life need to be pulled up, that need to be dealt with. And we're trying to get to the roots. And when I think about the word of God, I know that Jesus doesn't speak things gratuitously. I, I know that he doesn't speak things needlessly. That if Jesus says something 
And God in his infinite wisdom allowed it to be in the word of God where it is so that I can read it. Then there is an importance to it. And Jesus wants me to gain something here. And what he wants us to know as believers that we have the capacity to pray. We have the capacity to speak to the spiritual issues in our life and to deal with them. They may be complicated. They may be tangled. They may be intertwined. And, and things may be messed up and, and been in our life for a long time, but they can be untangled and they can be removed and they've got to go. Somebody listening to me today, you've been dealing with things for a long time. Maybe it's just procrastination. Maybe it's, it's any kind of thing that's been hindering you. And I'm not talking about forces coming against you so much is forces on the inside of you and you've got to take authority and you've got to take control and you've got to realize that, you know what, I can speak to these issues. I can begin to deal with these issues. The first thing I think for myself is that if I become honest with God in the prayer closet and say, Lord, help me, I'm procrastinating or help me, I'm selfish or help me, that there's something in my life that is keeping me from moving forward. And I know it's not just life and I know it's not just situation and I know it's not just circumstance and I know it's not just condition and I know it's not just my wife and I know it's not just my husband and I know it's not just my kids and I know it's not just my boss and I know it's not just where I am economically or financially and I know it's not where I live in the country. I, I can blame everybody. I can blame the politicians and I can blame the pastors and I can blame everybody for why I am where I am but the truth of the matter is that I am where I am because I never took authority in my life to begin to speak to these things and have just a little bit of faith. And see, the thing is, this is you don't have to have a lot of faith. All you have to do is begin to speak to these areas in your life. One of the things that I dealt with personally in my life for a long time was the spirit of rejection. But I began to speak to that spirit every time it tried to rise up and make me feel like I was rejected and unloved and unvalued and nobody cared about me. And, you know, with a spirit of rejection, you want recognition, you want acceptance, you want value, you want to be loved. But you got to know that you're accepted and valued in God, that God sent his own son, that whoever should believe on his name, that you become a child of God. And so the thing is, this is that I begin to see myself and begin to develop my identity based on who God said I was and not who I thought I was because my mother didn't want me. My mother told me when I was 12 years old that I was supposed to be an abortion. My father told me that he told me I would never be anything at the same age. So here I am told I'm going to be an abortion, told I'm never going to be anything, never amount to anything. But as a believer, even though I came to Christ and I'm in a process of being regenerated, I'm also being sanctified, but I'm still dealing with all the baggage that I dealt with when I came in to the kingdom of God. And there's a process to that. And if I didn't know that I could begin to declare who I I am what I am and what God says I am by the power of God and in faith I could speak to it I could speak to these root systems and these entanglements and these things that would always try to pull me down then I would never have had any kind of victory there are believers you believe and yes you're on your way to heaven but you're not experiencing victory in your life because you don't know how to speak to these issues and so maybe you have a spirit of rejection and your wife looks at you sideways and then you start manifesting because you don't know how to deal with this stuff you deal with this you take it on and you begin to deal with it head on in the prayer closet or you begin to speak to it i'm not rejected i'm received god loves me and you got to see yourself in estimation of his love for you. You don't need more faith. You just need your faith to speak your faith and confront your roots. Some of you are praying, but you're not saying. Now, the Bible says that you've got to believe that you receive when you pray. You got to believe that you receive when you pray. But before that, the Bible says that, you know, as I quoted to you out of Mark uh, 11, uh, 22 through 24, is this, is that you've got to speak to these mountains to be cast into the sea, to be removed and cast into the sea and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that whatever things you say will be done and you shall have what you say. The thing is this, is that many times we pray something, but we don't say it. We don't keep confessing it. We don't keep believing it. We don't keep declaring it. This is the thing is that you can't just pray it and then start 
speaking a whole bunch of negativity and garbage because the power of life and death is in the tongue. And this is the thing. The Bible says that many are defiled by what they say. Many times it's not what you pray. You're praying the right thing, but then you're not saying the right thing. If the enemy attacks your mind and says, you know what? Uh, your mother never loved you. Your father never loved you. You're supposed to be an abortion. You're never going to be anything in life. You know, you don't deserve to be anything. And, and you know what? You need to say, you know what? God loves me. He loves me so much that he sent his son to die in my place. I'm loved by God. Some of you out there, somebody, somebody you need to confess over your life every day. You know, it may be so hard for you. I'm going to tell you, there was a time in my life where it was so hard for me to look in the mirror and look myself in the eye and say, God loves me. Because you know what? I begin, these root systems just pulled me down to such a degree and I begin to give into it. But you know what? You've got to get to a place where even if you have faith the size of a mustard seed to just pick yourself up Go to the mirror in your bathroom or wherever it is. Make yourself, look yourself in the eye and say, you know what? God loves me. He loves me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever shall choose him shall not perish but receive everlasting life. The life that God has for you is a phenomenal, abundant life, but you also have certain things that you need to do to take authority and control over your life. God gave you the keys to the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of heaven and earth, and whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Many times you get to do the binding. Many times you got to do the loosing. Binding is you forbidding stuff. You, you loosing is you releasing stuff. You know, begin to forbid these things. I forbid these thoughts, this thought of rejection, suicide, depression, whatever it is, you got to take control. Recently, I just found out that even though I work out a lot, my core area is not as strong as it needs to be. Now, I could just keep on doing whatever I'm doing and not have a strong core, but if I want to have a six-pack abs when it comes time for pool time and to, you know, to be out at the pool with my kids and not want to feel like, hey, I'm doing all this working out and not seeing any results, then I got to do something called planks. Planks are hard because you got to get in a position and hold your body. And you know what? Each day I'm increasing the time and increasing and getting stronger, but I got to work it. I've got to do something. I can't just sit here and be lazy. Yeah, I'm saved, but I'm never going to have the body I want unless I beat my body into subjection. So this is the thing is that you got to work what God has given you. And he said that you take your faith and you speak to the things in your life. You speak to these mountains and you, you speak to your mountains and you pull up your roots. And many times you think you have a faith problem. And, and this is the issue. The issue is not your faith. The issue is not your faith. You don't need more faith. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. All you have to do is just get yourself to do it. I had to wake up one morning and say, you know what? I'm going to start doing this exercise. And it was painful. And it is painful. But you know what? Without pain, there is no progress. That There is a suffering and so many times the pain is, it's not that you haven't had the faith, it's that you just haven't directed your faith in the right direction. It's not the, the size of your faith that matters to God, but it's what you do with your faith. If you just have the faith the size of a mustard seed and begin to speak to these things that are deeply embedded in your life, come on, you've got to do some soul searching. You got to be for real. You got to be honest. Something may have happened to you. You may have been molested as a child. You may have been something dramatic happened to you. You may have suffered loss, the loss of a parent. Uh, at four and a half years old, my father divorced my mother. He walked out, walked out on us. I remember that day because I said goodbye, dad, and didn't see him for a long time. I can't even remember when I saw him again. But that was a traumatic moment. That was a, a moment that at four and a half years old, I, I, I felt the, the abandonment of my father. And many times we have a hard time really receiving Christ, God, the father, as our father, because we never had a relationship with our natural father. And there's these roots. And so now you're a father, but you're having a hard time fathering your children, or you're a single mother, and it's these root systems, and you're angry at the man who uh, left you with your children and all these bills to pay, but you know what? God will supply. All of this is about you just taking the steps to speak to these things and to begin to declare what God says about your life. Jesus said, if you speak to these things with the smallest amount of faith that they'll come up, you can supernaturally untangle 
and uproot the most complicated and difficult issues of your life. I'm, I'm here to tell you that there are times in my life where I didn't know how I was going to make it. There were times when uh, Pastor Tara and I argued to a place where I thought it was going to end in divorce. There are times where even as a parent, I didn't parent necessarily the way I wanted to. There was a long time that I began to see myself based on the abuse that was done to me in my life, based on the verbal abuse that was spoken over my life, based on all the missteps and the mishaps and the mistakes and the things that went on in my life. And I was offended. And when I was in the world, I was looking for love in the wrong places. I thought that if I went to nightclubs, I thought if I dated a lot of pretty women, I thought that, that all these things would satisfy me. I, I thought that wealth and abundance and these things would satisfy me. But no matter how much my mountains were moving out of my way, and let's just say they were moving out of my way even in the natural, because we know that some people in the natural seem to be succeeding, but we're not supposed to be worried about what people do in the world. But even so... You look at some of the most successful people in the world and they are some of the most miserable people because they've never dealt with the root issues. And the thing is this, you still need Jesus and you need to see yourself in estimation of what he did on the cross to really have victory in every area of your life. This is the thing. When you get a revelation that you have the power to change your life by what you say, you can change the trajectory of your life. You could speak yourself into your next level. You could shift your life today. You could begin to change it. It may not shift in 24 hours, but you begin to feel the shift. You begin to declare who you are in Christ. I'm a king's kid. I belong to God. I'm a friend of God. He, he, he loves me so much that he left heaven to come down to earth. He became a man. So, you know, the son of God became the son of man so that the sons of men could become the sons of God. When you realize that you have power and authority, that the power structure doesn't have to uh, dominate your life, that demons don't have to dominate your life, that power and struggle doesn't have to dominate your life, that you could begin to see signs, wonders, and miracles. And I know that the enemy, the moment you try to speak something, something's going to happen to try to discourage you. But you got to know that, that the devil, all he tries to do is disturb and distract you. He can't stop God from doing what God wants to do in your life. And so you're dealing with stuff, stuff that's been there for a long time. And it started out as seeds, it started out as seeds. You know what? They, they, they've done studies that, that children can feel rejection from the womb. So my mother wanted me to be an abortion. I could feel that it was that seed that, that, that uh, like when I think about it, I think about Pharaoh or I, I think about Herod and I think about how they were terminating the, 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 the sons and the children, the firstborn, and that there was a spirit of termination. And you felt this spirit of termination, abortion that has become against your life, that every time you try to rise up, it seems like it just kills your purpose and destiny. But I'm here to tell you, you can speak to that. You can say abortion, go. Termination, leave. That I am purposed by God. I am destined by God. That God created me. He formed me. He fashioned me. He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. He knew my inward parts. He knows my substance. And God created me and called me for a purpose and destiny. And so you got to deal with it and pull it up. And Jesus said, I give you the power to speak to it. And so I'm here to tell you that you can speak to this thing in the prayer closet. You can, just how I spoke to it. When you know what it is, rejection, I bind you and I break your power and I cast you out. Spirit of the true and living God, I loose you in my life. You created me to be somebody. You formed me and fashioned me with a purpose and a destiny and you have a plan for my life. And you said, I, this is how I talk to God. Father, you said that if I speak to these things, that they will be uprooted, that they will be uprooted. It's not that they may be uprooted, that they possibly can be uprooted. No, they will be uprooted. And it may be painful and it may be a process and you're going to have to persevere and you're going to have to endure and you're going to have to stick it out. And when the enemy comes against your mind, you got to realize that you got to bring every thought into captivity, into the obedience of Christ, imaginations, arguments, everything that's going to try to rise up to be contrary to God's word. And you're going to look at reality instead of actuality, which is God. God's word is actual. This, all this that we see is temporal. You see me on this set and everything, it's all just temporary, but God is eternal. Jesus said, I give you power to speak to it. Power to speak to it. Basically, 
you got to understand that when you speak to things, it's going to shift. It's going to shift, and God is going to restore you, and God is going to take you to a place that you thought you would never be at. I'm going to tell you this, is that I've been walking with God for nearly 17 years, and I'm so thankful to press in and push in and to be where I am in Him, but it's a process, and if I had just allow myself to vanquish at this little bitty level and never press in, never study, never find out what God really has for me, never find out how he really feels about me, how much love he has for me. He loves you. Don't allow this to be a time to leave God. Uh, don't allow this time to be a time where you feel like you've got to walk away from God. Let me just tell you this. You never walk away from Christ without walking to someone or something. And I love how Peter said it. He said, when, when, when Jesus asked him if he was going to leave, he said, to whom am I going to go? The words that you have are eternal life. He said, I have, we have come to know and believe. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Let me just tell you this. I encourage you to come and to, to believe and to know that Jesus is the Holy One of God. And when you realize that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, when your father and mother forsake you, he'll take you up. You got to put your faith and trust in God so that so this, you and your spouse can handle the things in, that come, the mountains that come against your marriage together. Don't let the devil come in and run roughshod and cause division and schism and all that kind of stuff. Deal with the root issues. And don't go to your spouse and say, you know, you got root issues or your kids, they got root issues. Pray, intercede. You speak to the roots. Don't speak to the person. Sometimes it's hard for you to encourage yourself. You know, David said he encouraged himself and the Lord is God. But sometimes just speak to the issues and tell them to go. I'm so thankful for being able to come. And I had this assignment today to tell you to speak to the root issues. If you want a phenomenal life, you've got to take control of your life. You've got to take authority. Don't allow your past and your pain and the ne negativity of your life to keep you from having a phenomenal life. You've got to trust God. You've got to walk by faith. You've got to speak your faith. You've got to speak to every area of your life. Well, Pastor Terran, I love you. And we just pray that you would make life phenomenal. God bless. God is good. Phenomenal Life today would not be possible without family and friends and partners like yourself. We thank you so much for your generosity in your giving and we want to encourage you to continue to give into the fertile soil of this ministry so that Phenomenal Life today can continue to broadcast for your enjoyment. You can find us at phenomenallife.tv or phenomenallife.org to make your donation. God bless you and make life phenomenal. Phenomenal.